Welcome back, travelers, to Legendary Lore. And now we are into the second book of Kamigawa's original trilogy. And at this point, it takes place a few months after the last book. So after Toshi's big reveal, where he sent Choryu off into oblivion and did everything he did, Michiko was returned back to Aiganjo safely and put immediately under house arrest to where she was in the tallest tower and not allowed to go anywhere else. Because obviously. So we're still doing Rapunzel. But Michiko has been teaching herself kanji magic because she's trying to create a tiny little messenger bird that she can send off to Toshi so that he can break her out. <laughs> also, Lady Pearl Ear got exiled. Because this like, happened technically on her watch. Exactly. And because of how paranoid Kanda's gotten, after having just lost three of his guys, to o three of his entire divisions to Okagachi, he summons Yosei, the Morning Star, to protect the castle. Oh my gosh. Yes. At the same time, Toshi is basically having to relearn his magic because he got a huge power boost from the Myojin. Basically the whole thing with Super Kamiguru, where he reaches deep inside of them and pulls out their potential. Yeah. Yeah. Toshi needed an adult. So... At the same time this is happening, you have the crime lord boss, Urman, and she is trying to recruit him because of how strong he apparently has become so that she can stop the Sorotami that are currently trying to basically come in on her, on her territory, right? He says no, because he doesn't want to be beholden to anyone. So he sends a bunch of thugs, including Kiku and Maronar. It's at this point that we get a little bit more of an introduction to those two characters. Marinara was that rat that we saw earlier. Mm -hmm. He's kind of a nice guy. He just kind of wants to live. Doesn't really do anything wrong. And Kiku is really cool because she has the ability to cause flowers to sprout. Like she'll like she can throw a flower on somebody and then just grows and kills them. Which you would think is really green ability. But no, it's not. It's apparently a black ability. And in addition to that, her actual magic card talks about shadows and stuff like that. Shadow so, flowers. Shadow flowers. She has a giant flower on her, but that's pretty much the, the most we get there. While that's happening, Toshi runs away to get away from them, right? Mm -hmm. He's running into a place called the Heart of Frost, which is known to be home to the Yukiona. And apparently, because of the fact that the darkness and silence and night powers of the Majin of Night's Reach, they, they spread enough to where coldness falls under that same deal. Like cold as death, stuff like that, cold nights. Okay. Apparently... Cold magic is a part of Myojin of Night's Reach whole deal, right? Sure. And he decides, you know what, since that's probably correct, definitely correct, I'm going to go ahead and enslave an ice ghost. <laughs> I'm going to catch me a frost lass. Yeah, so basically what he does, he has, he puts up kanji that get all the thugs killed until Kiku and Maronar are cornered like they thought they had him cornered but it turns out he has com like not complete control but a pretty strong control over the yuki ona right mm -hmm. and so they need toshi's help to survive so he says okay here just let me put some kanji on you guys and so he puts the hyos and reckoner mark on both of them so now they are his blood brother and sister Meaning they can't harm him now. They were sent to kill him and now they can't. He forced them to join his gang. <laughs> I love it. And so he then basically throws a Pokeball. It's a little magic disc. He throws it and captures the Yukiona. I still love it. <laughs> and of course, there's just more to it. It's like a kanji ritual and all that stuff. But that's essentially what happens. Yeah. And so he's like, okay, time to have a family reunion. And so he goes back and he finds Hitsugu and he found some Yamabushi, Hijetsugu. Remember how he left to go do that? Yeah. 
he went to a bunch of the Yamabushi, told them, hey, I want to kill some Kami. The masters were like, why would we work with you? You summon demons. We'll just kill you and not have to worry about you anymore. So then Hijetsuguru responded with a counteroffer of, I'll just kill you. And he did. <laughs> he killed all the Yamabushi masters and then he abducted the apprentices and he has tortured them and brainwashed them into becoming his minions. In addition, <laughs> he has Choryu pinned to the wall, burned and dismembered, and kept alive by a magic crystal embedded in his chest. Snap. And he thanks Toshi for the gift. <laughs> <laughs> it's so delightful he's so metal for no reason he's very red <laughs> and so he tells him look I appreciate the gift but our vengeance is not complete the Orochi the Budaka and the Sorotami all are responsible for what happened to him. So what he wants to do is essentially this double pronged attack where he goes to the Jukai forest and slaughters the snake people and the monks while also ransacking the Minamo Academy and destroying the entirety of the Sorotami city above it. I love their dynamic already. Just like, <laughs> but, but we got revenge on the guy who killed Kobo. Yes, but these guys, they're my problem. Are, are you going to not let me murder all of them? <laughs> I'm helping you because I get to murder them all. What? I'm helping you because we're blood brothers. Oh, that's what I thought you said. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and so, basically, Toshi just kind of is like, wait, um, that all sounds like a great idea. <laughs> Super duper. Because, you know, vengeance and all, that's our shtick, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. But... You should definitely attack the Jukai first because I need to figure some things out and prepare for the Manamo one because we should fight them together. Mm. <laughs> and then they each give each other an artifact. Hijetsuku is given a the disc that has the Yukiona inside of it and Toshi receives a plate that if he uses it can summon an Oni. So if oh, he's ever trapped in, in some kind of bad situation, right? Mm -hmm. And then you have Lady Pearl Ear, who again, she was exiled for the whole deal with Michigo, right? She's in her home village, and it has been burned and raided by the Aki army. Oof. Because remember how that whole deal happened? Mm -hmm. Well, Sharp Ear shows up, and he's like, it's okay. We're in the forest. <laughs> Guess who else isn't dead? Captain Nagao, you know, the guy who was mortally wounded? Well, he survived. <laughs> and all his soldiers are here. And she's like, why haven't I heard any of this before? <laughs> it's because the Kitsune entirely just left Konda. Because he can't do anything with them anymore. He's not he's dangerous to have near them. He can't protect them. There's no point. Right? Mm -hmm. And so what they're going to do is they're going to try and make a diplomatic delegation and send it to the Manamo. Because Rico's there with them and she says that they can that they, they can learn something there, right? Basically, we have a group of humans, a group of Kitsune, both of which are white aligned, saying that we need to go to the blue group to try and get some help, right? Mm -hmm. Now, while that's happening, you have to take into account the fact that these Kitsune are more red green than they are white they're tricksters they love the forest they love nature they love peace and stuff like that but they're also they really do have a trickster streak they like creating flames and candles and stuff it's interesting but yeah so while that's happening and we just had the whole deal with the kitsu and stuff hidetsugu is meeting up with goto the bandit warlord right mm-hmm and he gives him the disc, the Yukiona disc, and tells him, look, wherever you want to wreak havoc, just release this thing. I know a guy, he can take it back whenever you are ready. 
And Goto's like, that's really weird that you're okay with me doing this. He goes, look, I love chaos. I'm an ogre of business. I'm an ogre of reason. I just want to see people die. We're cool. Don't worry about it. It's going to be great. It's going to be huge. And Goto's like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> this sounds like a great idea. And so he goes off into the middle of the, the battlefield. He cracks the disc and he runs away. And suddenly the Yukiona shows up and she just starts murdering people. Now, here's what's cool about the Yukiona. She appears as someone either beautiful or a lost loved one. And she lures people towards her and then she freezes them from the inside out. Snap. Yes. That's just been unleashed on this battlefield between Goto and Konda's armies. Then we go back to Toshi, Meru, and Kiku. They go to meet Uraman. So Toshi, he's in his shadow deal, right? Like he's invisible and all that stuff, right? And he follows Uraman in. He follows her to the Shadow Gate, which is a special shrine meant for the Knight's Reach. He goes through it, and now he's in the spirit world, basically. He's at the Honden of Knight's Reach. Now, while we have a card that represents the Honden of Knight's Reach, it's not actually the Honden of Knight's Reach. The one on the card is the physical manifestation in the mortal realm. This one is in the spirit world. So think more full metal alchemist gate than Honden on the card. That yeah. makes sense? Yeah. And so it's here that he's able to actually basically be where she is. And he talks to her and it basically gets permission to use the gate to have the chance to teleport across Kamigawa. And now he's indebted to her. He then kills Uraman and Kiku and Mero run away. Toshi then uses his new powers. He telep teleports directly to Michiko. Gets her out of Igon the Aiganjo, drops her off with Pearl Ear, and he tells the Kitsune to keep her away from Minamo. Now, do you think they're going to keep her away from Minamo? <laughs> Doesn't sound like them up to this point. No, and no, they're, they're definitely not, because nobody trusts Toshi, because Toshi's a thug. He can't be trusted. He's a, he's a thief. He's a thug. <laughs> and then he teleports to Hijetsugu's lair, and he mercy kills Choryu. He, he pulls the crystal out because Troy didn't deserve the level of destruction he got because he was a pawn. He was just a pawn that thought he was doing the right thing and he killed a guy and it was a bad move, but he it's cruel and unusual what he's going through, essentially. Mm -hmm. So he allows him to die. And now Conan knows his daughter's missing again. <laughs> and now he's spreading his army all over the place because you have Okagachi attacking, uh, attacking Aganjo. You have the Yukiona front happening. You have the groups that he just sent to find Michiko. It's all over the place. He sends all the refugees away because they're not safe at Aiganjo anymore. And while they're fleeing in that direction, they run into the Aki army and Takeno releases Isamaru. Isamaru, of course, being the hound. The hound of Konda? Yes. <laughs> That's delightful. So we get introduced to Isamaru earlier in the story. He was basically uh, Michiko's dog, and he's this massive beast of a boy. And Takeno releases him, thinking, okay, you'll be safe. Go away. We're going to end the episode there. This is about halfway through the story, actually, of the second book. So we're actually going to get this one done as a twofer. So that should be good. That should be great. It sounds good. Yeah, this one feels a little more clean cut. But thank you guys so much for watching. We're going to go ahead and catch you guys next time with some more Kamigua. Go ahead and oh, leave yes. a like if you like the video and subscribe because if you do, you'll find out if the Kitsune leave Michiko with Monomo. Michiko. I was paying attention. I just can't follow all these names. Jukai. Aigonju. Ukagaji. Deki. Denki. Denki.